guys, welcome back to another video. For today's video, we wanted to bring you something a little bit different. We are down at GKHQ today. We have just wrapped up one of our half-term training days and we were very lucky to be joined by Freddie Woodman. Now, a lot of you guys will know Freddie, currently plays for Preston North End in the Championship and throughout his career, he's represented different teams like Newcastle and England at a variety of youth levels, even winning the Under-20 World Cup. And we were very lucky for him to join us for our GKHQ training day, chat with our goalies and we thought we'd show you our conversation with him. So sit tight, learn some lessons from a top goalie and a top person, and hopefully it might give you something that can help. Some of the things which stood out to me, obviously, Freddie has been involved with some top level clubs, like I say, trained with Joe, and he's still quite young. How old are you, Fred? 27. Is that, is that young? Yeah, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take well, it. Your career so far, you've kind of played it a variety of different levels and different experiences. How do you find kind of playing now at your age as a number one versus kind of coming through the path that you found? It's been um, a variety of places. Yeah, no, I've, I, I've come through like loads of different places. Um, yeah, I sort of learnt my trade with a few loan moves and stuff. Um, obviously now with the experience that I've got, I. We had this, I had this chat with Joe. I don't think it ever gets any easier. Goalkeeping is such a unique position. Um, so it doesn't get any easier. I just think you just get a little bit more wiser. Um, and yeah, you, you just get to grips with being a goalkeeper a little bit better. But um, yeah, like I couldn't have been in this position I am now without um, the start I had at Newcastle when I was, I guess, young. Uh, I was 14 when I was at Newcastle. So yeah, I think that, that was the start of my journey and um, it allowed me to go on to you know, achieve some of the things that, 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 that I did. And that start, I mean, because you're from down south originally. Yeah, you? yeah. So I started at Crystal Palace. I, I didn't really go in goal until I just went into secondary school. Uh, my, dad was a, my dad was a goalie and he always <laughs> tried to get me out of goal. So uh, yeah, I went into goalkeeping quite late, but you know, once I was in it, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was class, I loved it. You know, I, I saw you guys outside just diving around in the mud. Like for me, this is like perfect weather for goalkeeping. And as soon as I, I, I was at Crystal Palace as a kid, like every day I just wanted to just dive around being goal and I, and I absolutely loved it and um, yeah that that allowed me to build and obviously I got my got my move to Newcastle and then that's where really like things started to ramp up for me and I and I felt like I could become a professional. So some of you guys who were not even in secondary school yet if you think at your age Freddie wasn't even playing a goal yeah there's so much learning and so much growing that you go through when you're your age so the fact that you guys are already coming to days like this and coming and training and learning it just shows how keen you are for that position what gave you the kind of the feeling that you wanted to go and go even when your dad was saying oh play our field oh, mate, honestly it was just total random like I was at school um there was a uh, a game going on on an astro turf and it, you know it just got chucked in goal and uh luckily one of my teachers was a scout for Crystal Palace and uh yeah I just had had a day where it just I just was, I guess, pretty good in goal. And then I just got my, got my trial at Crystal Palace. And like, that's how quickly things can change. You know, I, I, you guys are so young, but you know, I guess you all play for Sunday league teams and, and stuff. And you just never know who's watching and it can, it can change your life, you know, just in a, in a blink of a moment. And I look back at that moment on that AstroTurf and it has completely changed my life. And yeah, I'm so grateful for that teacher that, to give me the chance because life could have been so different for me. And how old were you when you made the move to Newcastle? 14, I, I moved up to Newcastle, yeah, so it was a, it was a massive change, you know, I was, a, I was a London boy, like, I hadn't been outside the M25, all of a sudden I was in Geordie land, and I was like, wow, this is so professional, and like, you know, you guys have got this here, which is, which is incredible, and at such a young age, you know, it, can, it will only benefit you and, and make you, like, better, better footballers better, and better goalkeepers. So, you guys will know you're playing for your youth teams and stuff, and then when you suddenly get into men's football, or women's football, and adult football, the hard bit when you're a young goalkeeper is getting the opportunity to play games. Because a lot of the time, people look at you and go, oh, you're a bit too young, you've not played adult football before. But one of the ways that you can do it when you're in a professional club like Freddie was is to go out on loan and play for different teams. These are some of the teams that you play for on loan. As you can see, lots of different places, some up in Scotland, some in Wales, some down south. Are there any of these that kind of stand out to you as places where you kind of really learn or developed in a certain way? You know, 
all of them were unique in a way. Um, like my first one at Hartlepool, it was the first, you know, I went into League Two and it was, I was 17 and it was just an absolute like eye opener. Um, <laughs> I had to, you know, like, wash my own kit and make my own food. And it was very, like, it was all very new to me and like points mattered there. Um, and then I guess going a bit later on, in, when I went up to Scotland, um, I went to Kilmarnock and um, I was playing every week and there was a pressure, but it wasn't really a pressure to win. It was more of like not get beat. Yeah. Um, and that, that was different. And then of course, when I went to Aberdeen with Joe, it was like, you have to, you're expected to win every game. Yeah. Uh, and I was competing against a top goalkeeper at the time and, uh, and he was rightfully the number one. Um, and, and that was that was strange um, and, and, and good at a time because I guess, you know, I was getting, I was young, I was pushing him, he was pushing me, uh, w which was great. And then I had my two years at Swansea, which were just, you know, unbelievable. And that's where I really felt like I established myself as a, as a, as a goalkeeper, managed to get in the playoffs twice, didn't, you know, manage to go all the way. But uh, every single of these, one of these uh, moves has is, is, is like moulded me into, into the person I am now and allowed me to be, you know, I guess a, a decent number one. And you, like you say, you were 17 at Hartlepool. Do you remember how old you were when you finished playing at Swansea? Uh, 21. Yeah, so I mean, if you think four years, for you guys, if you think four years ago, some of you was <laughs> that big four years ago, the amount of kind of learning and growing that you go through in goalkeeping in the short space of time, like Freddie says, I think you never know how fast things can change, but you never know how quickly you learn and you develop and you go to different places. Um, and then next one, quickly... Some of you might know, obviously, Freddie, and then some of you might know who Freddie was playing against. How did you find then kind of actually performing at the very, very top of English football? Yeah, no, in all honesty, it, it, was, it was tough, you know, playing against <laughs> the best in the world. And it just felt like I was in a, you know, a massive pressure cooker uh, of the Premier League. But I look back now and it's just one hell of a learning experience. Um, you know, playing at Old Trafford was 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 great, and obviously playing for such a big club like Newcastle, um, yeah, it was it was amazing, and I I learned so much in that short short period of time um, when I was in the team, uh, which, which which was really good, and then which led me on to you know going sign for Preston as a number one, and obviously I've been there now. This is my third season, you know, playing regularly, and 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 that's a different type of pressure, yeah. um, trying to just continue to be in the team, playing well. And it's all about consistency and just trying to churn out the games. Um, but yeah, no, I look, I look back at that time in the Premier League and it, it, it gives me so much hunger and, and fire to try and get back there. That, that, that's where you want to be, any top goalkeeper. And I think, like you say, to now be kind of 27, being established number one, playing in such a big club like Preston, it's almost building that career of consistency and consistently performing. Because, I mean, we all know one week you might have a great game, one week you might have a not so great game. The difference between that and the top level guys is they have to build their careers on performing at a very consistent level all the time. Is there anything that you've found as you've grown up as a goalkeeper which has helped you to do that, helped to kind of be consistent with your performances and your games? Yeah, I think uh, I'm a big believer then like everything comes from your training. Mm -hmm. So like if your training levels are up here, then when you play matches, your match level will be up here. And I look at consistency at like loads of things, you know, I guess everyone today would have caught volleys or, or any type of handling and it's like consistently making sure your handling's like up to scratch you know every time you do a distribution session con concentrate on your consistency or kicking the ball in the areas that you want to kick and I think if you can get consistency in all these different areas of goalkeeping then you almost build the you know we have to be perfect so it almost gets you close to that like that perfect mark which 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 goalkeepers need to be so yeah, that, that's helped me. My training levels, you know, every, every time I train, I, I want to try and be consistent in everything I do, every action. The other part of your kind of career so far, which, like I say, is still so young, but the fact you've done so much already, one massive part is this kind of achievement here that you had. Winning the Under-20 World Cup with, with England, I put there the first kind of England goalkeeper to win a World Cup since Gordon Banks. How was that experience as a... Kind of, I'm sure you've obviously played lots of youth games growing up as, a, as an England goalkeeper, but to, to be in a World Cup tournament and to perform for your country and to win it, how was that? Yeah, like the, obviously it's probably one of my greatest achievements you know, so far in my career. Um, playing for England at any level is obviously just incredible, but you know, for, for us to go on and 
win the win the World Cup um, in South Korea was 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 unbelievable. Really, um, you know, totally unexpected. I was pushed, you know, very hard in in that squad. Dean Henderson was was the other goalkeeper, um, and he was pushing me extremely hard. So, you know, just to come away with that, and to, and obviously. You, as a goalkeeper to get recognised with a golden glove was was incredible and and as I look back now like I, I've said so many times already now is that these are just such like golden opportunities for learning yeah. and like if I don't have that experience and I don't you know take the lessons that I learned from that experience I don't become you know the, like the goalkeeper I am now so yeah every time I look back I just I think about you know how many lessons that I learned from that and it's built built the person I am today so yeah no incredibly grateful for that opportunity and I think one of the things that after doing some research on this that kind of shows who you are as a person as well as a goalkeeper is something that I'm going to show next and I think this next thing is something that all of you guys need to really take on board so we've seen obviously where Freddie's played who he's played against the level that he's been I think the fact that he comes down in his spare time to talk to you guys shows you what type of person he is but we always talk about here at GKHQ is the most important thing to help you to be better goalkeepers and to be good people. And the next thing that I want to show you is, Freddie won't want to talk about it because he's a humble guy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this, yeah. But this, I'll leave this up so you can read it, but basically, Freddie, after winning the World Cup with England, which would probably be the high point of any of our careers, took the time to write a letter to the kit man from the England team saying how grateful he was for his health and how grateful he was for the team that helped them to win the World Cup in his own handwriting on a piece of paper and like I say Freddie probably won't say much about it but I think that shows that even at the very height of winning World Cups and winning trophies it's important how you behave and how you treat people and how you treat your teammates and the people that you work with regardless of however we all go on and play and what teams you play for this type of behaviour is something which I think is should be amend, uh, commended so I think for you guys it's really important that you see that someone who's at the very very top that's still how they behave um, the last thing I want to show you is this thing so Freddie <laughs> do you remember this moment and do you remember what you were yeah. thinking as it was happening no yeah I do remember this moment very yeah vividly um, yeah so obviously this is the this is the final of the under 20 world cup and um, I don't know, I guess you guys have probably heard of like sports stars where you feel like time slows down and you know, you just feel like you're ready for like a moment. And uh, the night before the game, I had my iPad watching penalties, watching penalties, watching penalties. And I actually wrote down uh, on my water bottle, you know, stay up as long as you can. He might go down, the, he might go down the middle. Um, and then, yeah, little, little bit did he hold, he, uh, he kind of went down the middle and I managed to save it. I think it was 80, 82, 83, and, and we won the, won the up, yeah. One up. World Cup final, 82 minutes, one nil up, and you produced that. How, did, how long would that feeling be? Yeah, how was that feeling? Ah, uh, no, it was unreal. It was just, you know, like, I, I, I hear people speak about, you know, when time slows down, and like, it's just <laughs> like, you're in the moment, you're in, you're in like a flow state, yeah. and that whole game, I just felt like I was just such in like a, I wasn't thinking at all. Everything was just happening. It was just, everything was so natural. And I, I felt like I prepared for that moment, you know, the night before, just constantly watching the penalties. I just felt like I was ready for that moment. And it was, there's not a better feeling as a goalkeeper when you know you're prepared yeah. and you just feel like anything you do is going to turn to gold. It, like, it's the best feeling ever. And I've, I, that's always been a big thing for me is like preparation. You know, if, if you can prepare as well as you can, I, I think you'll go into the game and, you'll, and you'll be super confident. Was there anything that you did on the day leading up to the game? Because obviously it looks like it was at night time. It's a long time waiting for the World Cup final. Was there anything that you kind of did in the day to help yourself prepare or were you, um, you know, just experiencing it? So, someone, the first time? Yeah, no, so, someone taught me a lesson uh, when I was early on in my career is that like, you can't concede a bad goal sitting at home or sitting at the hotel or, and I was always, when I was young, I was always like, a, you know, anxious, like panicky, like couldn't wait for the game. And I got this bit of information and it was like the best thing ever. Like, I, I, you know, I was super relaxed the whole day. Can't concede a bad goal at home. Yeah. Can't make a mistake at home. Yeah. And then as soon as, you know, you get into the warm up, you know, you, you, you just sort of just go into your training and everything's nice and relaxed. And yeah, no, it was just, it was just an incredible moment for me. And one that obviously just sticks with me uh, throughout my career. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, like you say, I think 
think the preparation and the career that you've been through at the, to that point stood you in good stead for it, but the lessons you took from it now, like you say, pay off as a as you continue to grow in your career. So I mean, for you guys now, obviously we've had a lot of time to listen to to Freddie chat and for me asking him questions. We've given you guys a chance to write down some questions. Who would like to ask Freddie a question first? Lucas, yeah, go on. Other than Ronaldo, who's the best player you've played against? Oh, um, I played against uh, Mbappe uh, when I was under 19s actually for England. Uh, he he managed to score past me actually. So I guess he he was he was an incredible player to play against at such a young age. I knew that he would be a top player. Um, but obviously, you know, Ronaldo and, and it, I remember uh, being in Old Trafford uh, on that day and being in the tunnel and obviously Ronaldo's first game and there's just so much hype about yeah. Ronaldo. And I, I looked I look round and I was like, oh, I forgot they had Pogba, Varane, <laughs> De Gea. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot about them. It was just constantly on Ronaldo. But yeah, I've been lucky enough to play against so many, so many good players. But I, I'd have to say Mbappe, you know, when he was young. Santi? What was the best atmosphere you played in? Great question. Oh yeah, that's a great question. Um, there's some grounds that are just like hectic. Um, St James's Park, when I play for Newcastle on a good day, St James's Park is 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 one of the best atmospheres. It has to be. Um, yeah, no, it's 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 incredible. Um, in terms of away atmospheres, Leeds is normally yeah, Leeds is normally quite feisty. And obviously, when we was in Scotland, I always felt like Celtic Park was just iconic and like just class. Like I, just, I love playing there. Rory, is there any manager who would play under? Play for any manager. Oh, play under. Yeah. My dad's gonna want me to say my dad, isn't he? <laughs> but I would definitely not play under him. Um, who would I want to play under? Um, I, th- I, you, you'd have to, you'd have to say Pep, right? Yeah. You know the way that he plays football, the way that his goalies are in the team. I, I'd have, to, I'd have to pick Pep. Just quickly on the back of that, I remember when, when you were at Aberdeen, we were chatting during training. We'd always have the conversations. I remember you talking about, because I always thought one of Freddie's big strengths was 1v1s. I always think he used to stay so big. And every time I'd watch a game and, and someone would go through 1v1 with Freddie, I always was so confident that he was going to save it. And I asked him what you said, and you said something about Rafa Benitez and spoke to you about it. And yeah. Because obviously Rafa Benitez was Liverpool manager, he was Newcastle manager when, when Freddie was there. And he was there. Quite a lot of managers don't have an input or don't talk to the goalies. Just let yeah. the goalie get on with it. But I remember you saying he had quite a big. Yeah, influence. Rafa was. Yeah, Rafa Benitez, obviously, you know, an incredible manager. He had such an influence on, on me as a goalkeeper in terms of being a completely different goalkeeper. You know, you're brought up in your coach in English way, yeah. uh, especially back then. And then he comes in and he's got all these different ways about trying to get close to the ball, trying to be as big as possible, trying to get the knee down and, and, and stuff like this. Using the six-yard box as a reference, I always felt like that was a good one in, in, in 1v1 situations. We're very keen to rush out to, to get to the ball and close the ball. And he always used to say the pressure's on them, stay in the six-yard box and then sort of recognise if they take a big touch, then you can go and, and smother it. And I always feel like he always helped me in, 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 in 1v1 situations because I think it was that Spanish way, you know, yeah. that, that blocking never used to be an English thing. Nah, that's brilliant. Yes, Hugo. Who's your favourite keeper? Um, oh, it's so hard, this. I love, I love Alison and I love Edison uh, and everyone always asks me who's better but I, I, can't, I can't decide. And you know, I think recently as well, one of the best, Martinez from, from Aston, I think he's, I think some of the things he's done have, have been incredible. So, I think it'd have to be one out of them three. And another great example of a different career. Like yeah. Martinez, where he's been, what he's done, all the low moves he had from Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming through to then, like you say, win a World Cup and be Incredible. one of the best in the world. Yeah, yeah. Len? If you play against, like, top players like Ronaldo and Mbappe, do you feel more pressure playing for this Um... Not more pressure, but you're aware that obviously of the quality that they got. We do a lot of um, like homework. It's, it's almost like homework before we play these teams. So we recognise what certain players like to do. Um, so yeah, you, you, you're definitely more aware of, I guess, players that have a lot of quality and can cause you problems. Um, and you just try and highlight where they can hurt you. Um, but in terms of you know, pressure... I feel like you know being a goalkeeper is just super pressured environment anyway, so it doesn't matter who you come up against. But yeah, like um, you're just aware of certain players, you know. Yeah, it's a good question, great question. Josh. So, what's the best thing you've 
Best team I've played against? Uh, who's caused me the biggest problems? Um, oh, I'm trying to think who I've never, never, never really beat. Fair, you've played a fair few. I know. <clears throat> Celtic have always given me a tough yeah. time. I feel like you've, you've probably beaten more times than... No, I've beaten once. Was it last game of the season? Yeah. yeah. I've, I've 26 attempts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd have to say Celtic. Zero draws. Really? One, I just... Three, every, I was up there for two years and I just... I could never seem to get the better of them, ever. Like, they're just always so good. Yeah. So probably Celtic over the course of my career. Luca? Oh yeah, teammate. Um, I guess the one with the most quality. Um, there was a moment when I was at Newcastle and we was bottom of the league and we signed Kieran Trippier. And I've never seen someone come into a team and be like, he's world class. Like he was, he was, he changed the intensity of training. And he's probably the one that stands out the most where it's like, he was unbelievable. We come in and he, you could see that he was like, you know, leagues, <laughs> leagues like above everyone else. So probably Kieran Trippier. That's a great question. Yes, Darcy? When did you start playing? I, well, I started playing football, I guess, outfield from a baby, really. Um, but I guess I started taking it serious as soon, about 11 years old. Um, but I wish I would have picked it up sooner. You know, I wish I would have had the similar to what you guys have got now I wish I could come somewhere if I could go back I, I wish I could come somewhere and my dad not say to me don't go in goal you know I wish he would just say like just do what you want and come to here and like I just saw your board there like what you've done all day it's like the best thing ever like you know you come here you play football every single day like you know that 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 is incredible and and what you guys have done out there like today is exactly how I like I just been to training myself today and my enthusiasm for training today would have been the same as you guys out there, you know, the love of being a goalkeeper, like, I, it was, it's just unreal. Lucas? What's the best save you've ever made? Oh. Is that... Huh? Commentary? Did you mean... <laughs> it was one of them, yeah. That was hell of a save, Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people have said that to me, to be yeah. fair, yeah. No, I, that, that would be up there. I, yeah. I made one as well at Barnsley, but no one will ever remember it, and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was, it was, the, the maddest thing is, is uh, in the warm up, I made the exact same save. Really? And, and a guy tweeted after the game, he was like, I'm a cameraman for Sky. And I watched him make the same save twice. No way. And it was, yeah, it was, it was one of the best saves I've made for sure. Uh, but that commentary one was good. But he tweeted, he was like, this, it, it was, uh, I made the same save, exactly the same. It was crazy. That's so good. Luke, uh, Santi? What's the best Ooh, um, yeah, I've been so lucky to play so many like in so many great countries against some great teams. There was that, that France team when they had Mbappe. Um, they had some you know some some great players. They knocked us out at uh, under 19s. Like I, I was 19 at the time. So France when they when when they had this, so many good players. Rory, uh, what favorite chant can you about Favorite chant. Oh, I know some ones I don't like. <laughs> yeah, there's a few I don't like. Um, what's my favourite chant? Who, who was your team growing up? Did Crystal Palace. Palace. Glad all over then, it's got to be. Have you ever, have you seen Palace play? Glad all over, it comes out. Yeah, it's a good cellar spark. It's a good, it's a good atmosphere, yeah. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, ultras, yeah. Dana, you got any questions? Yeah. Favourite league? has to be the Premier League for me it's just the it's just the ultimate um, it is just you you're 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 taken outside your comfort zone uh, so much and it's like yeah it's the it's the best league in the world for sure um, so yeah I couldn't I couldn't not say the Premier League some great questions yeah, some, some really great questions. questions but Freddie thank you so much for coming down really appreciate your time right, anytime first of all thank you to you guys for coming today hope you've enjoyed it you've absolutely smashed it um, and we can't wait to see some of you guys back soon. And massive round of applause for Freddie, please. Thanks, guys. So a massive thank you to Freddie for coming down and chatting with our goalkeepers. A massive thank you to our keepers for coming along to our GKHQ training day. And a big thank you to you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it brought you some value. 
If it did, please hit that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we will see you very soon for the next video. Look after yourselves, keep chasing improvement, and we'll speak to you in a bit. Bye.